it's time to make some dice. Got our mold from last week ready to go. Looking good. Put it on a little pallet. Our friends at Art Resin sent over this resin for us to play with. I measured out the uh, A and the B equal volumes. So where's my cup? Here we go. Let's dump them and mix them. Okay, that's about as much as I care to scrape the cup. I'll scrape this other cup the same amount. Just try to get an even mix. This is what we're going for here. It's about 66 degrees in the shop. It's nice and cool. Should give us plenty of time to work with this material. This is a long cure. I think it's 24 hours to full cure. I have five dice, therefore I have five cavities. So let's make them different colors just for fun. Now I'm whipping a lot of air into this resin as I mix it, but we're gonna vac it before we pour the castings. Got four cups. So one of the dice will cast clear and the others will, dot, will cast in different colors. So I'm gonna put a little in each cup. All right, we've got our four color cups and we've got our four bottles of UD dye. This is uh, a dye that works with epoxy and urethane and uh, silicone rubbers. It's just kind of sort of an all purpose dye from our friends at Silpak. So let's mix some up. This substance uh, is most excellent as a, as a resin dye. It's also one of the nastiest uh, things to work with in the history of the human planet. It gets everywhere. Everything it touches gets violently and permanently stained. It's strong stuff. Tony, you, you get this stuff on your hands and it's all over the shop, man. Okay, we've got the resin all mixed up. Let's go de-air it. There are a lot of air bubbles still in this material. Let's see what happens if I hit this with a heat gun. That got rid of a lot of bubbles. All right, let's see what's gonna happen here. Number one, let's pour it. Absolutely still shot through with bubbles. Pour in a thin stream. Okay, that's one. And just so I don't forget, let me Mark it with the color I'm going to paint over there. I'm going to paint the lids. Same thing. I'm going to, I'm pouring in a stream. Hopefully uh, that'll break some of those bubbles. The problem is, this is these are closed molds and I'm very, very tempted to pressure pot them. But if I do, they're going to lose a fair amount of volume. Okay. We'll do this one blue. Let's do the triangle black. And then let's do the Last one, clear, just as a control. I wanna see what the clear resin looks like. And you really see the bubbles in the clear resin. It's fascinating to me how the bubbles can travel down such a thin little drizzle of resin. Okay, so we've got them filled. The next step is gonna to be to cap them, but we are gonna trap a lot of bubbles, no doubt. So what's the best strategy? Should I just let them sit for a while? Think about their sins? Yeah, let's do that. And in the meantime, I'm gonna put some resin on these caps because that's really gonna help control bubbles in the mold. The bubbles are rising out slowly, but I'm not in the mood to wait for them. I'm really more interested in what's gonna happen with the edges and how much cleanup is gonna be required from these castings. Let's flip fold this mold. Just flip it and roll it down like that. And then what we want to do is we want to put pressure on it. So I was looking around the shop going, what have I got that I can use as a weight block to sit on top of this to make the, f I'm trying to get the flash as thin as possible. And by putting even weight on the top of the mold. So I found one of these and I said, that is might be the perfect thing. If only I had some weights. And then I found these beauties. <laughs> This will work out like a champ. Let's just fill this up. Oh yeah, now that is some pretty good little weight on top of that rubber mold. 
it's 90 degrees inside the hot box and this is just a converted refrigerator with some uh, reptile heaters down in the bottom making a nice warm environment let's let that cook for the next 24 hours and see what happens it's the next morning i pulled our little baby out of the hot box it's ready to go the nut box did its job i hope it's got some squeeze out that's what we wanted to see is the flash to squeeze out the sides but the question is what have we got to look at here? Oh yeah, look at that. You know, I'll take this flash. That flash is nice and thin. Very paper, paper thin. That's exactly what we wanted. It's paper thin flash. So that, just without looking at anything else, is exactly the result we wanted. Let's get the pieces out. Let me show you how to get the flash off that mold. It's generally one of the easiest ways to clean molds as well. Not just this kind of mold, but any kind of mold. Just take some masking tape, or in this case, some blue painter's tape. Slam it on there. And see how it sticks to it. You might have to do it a couple of times, but that just cleans thin flash like that off super easy. You can also kind of dab it and pull it like that. That's about the easiest way I've ever found to reliably clean most of the flash off a mold. Let's take a look at what we've got. As expected, there's a lot of bubbles on the inside, but boy, I tell you what, look at that. Look how paper thin that flash is. That is not bad. I think that's gonna require an absolute absolute minimum of cleanup. So I am really pleased with that mold design. This one's perfect. Look how little flash there is on that. You see that? Look how little flash. It's just just the tiniest amount of flash. Wow, that just worked out as good as I could have hoped. Here I was bad mouthing this mold and crying and whining and complaining actually is making nice castings. Okay, I'm calling that, I'm calling that a major win. I haven't even started to clean these things. The cleanup's gonna be mi very minimal. I'm pretty pleased, you know what? I'm gonna make a set of solid dice with urethane resin, and I'm gonna pressure pot this mold, because I wanted to pressure it all along, and I wanna know if the, if the air bubbles in this mold is gonna cause distortion in the next set of dice. Let's go find out. Little experiment here. What I want to know is, what happens if we fill it in two colors? Okay, now I've got to go because this stuff is starting to gel on me. It is beginning to gel. I can feel it. Okay, so who knows what we're going to get here. Let's run this into the pot. Flip. Fold, put on the weight, squeeze, and into the pot we go. Put this over here and all this over here and this and that. All right, let's peel this boy and see. Ooh. Interesting. <laughs> all right. Let's, once again, let's check our flash. Which flash do we get? Yeah, it's producing some just paper thin flash. Can't object to that. Let's pop these out. I did this little marbling effect. <laughs> wow, those are singularly unattractive dice, but hey, let's take a look. All right, well, again, the flash is paper thin, easy to clean. See, that's really very minimal cleanup on the edge. That's going to clean up just fine. I was pouring this set of dice and I got pulled away for a phone call and I had to take it. So I wasn't able to complete the pour, but I wanted to show you this because what you are looking at is the exact reason that I own pressure pots. That is classic resin foaming. And it's caused by the fact that my resin buckets sit around in the shop 
for weeks and sometimes months on end, and inevitably they get moisture inside the resin. The resin absorbs moisture. The result is foamy. And so you get castings that are absolutely shot through with bubbles. So these are a complete botched set of castings. No amount of vibration, no amount of injection, no amount of vacuum is gonna prevent this problem. This is the number one problem you're gonna have in a resin casting shop, and there's no way around it. You have to have a pressure pot. I talk about testing a lot on this channel. And basically this video, the entire video is one big giant test. Uh, here's the original set of dice. And here are all the sets that I cast this week in order. The first set, you'll recall, I backed the art resin, which is an epoxy clear resin. And uh, no amount of vacuum was going to get these bubbles out. So these are shot through with bubbles. So I switched to urethane. And I decided I'm going to do a two-tone effect. I wanted to go for like a flame dice. And so I mixed up some yellow and some red. And they cast well, mostly. But the last couple of them, because I was pouring slowly and carefully, the last couple dice caught bad bubbles because the resin had begun to gel. It was turning thick on me. Uh, the molds, again, made very clean castings, very, very minimal edge work to clean these, and therefore a good possibility to make dice that would work well. So I cast my first set of just single color urethane and uh, worked fine. No issues, good castings, easy to clean. Made a set of blue, but then I had an interesting problem with the blue and then I got some, some discoloration. And my guess is I put too much dye into it. A little bit too much pigment can cause problems. So they aren't perfect, but they're usable. Unfortunately, I lost this set because I had got that phone call I had to take, but I remade them the next time around. And this time they were pretty successful. Then I made a black and white set, same way just quickly pouring two colors of urethane and not mixing them up inside the mold. And, and that was uh, pretty successful in getting me a two-tone looking dye. Also, I did on this set and on this set, I started to practice to figure out how to color them in. And here I just used artist acrylic and uh, worked okay. But if you guys know of a better way, like the really trick method for color painting in the numbers, let me know in the comments below, because I'm just experimenting. So I cast one, two, three, four, five, six set of urethane dyes in that mold. They all worked out to varying degrees pretty well, but the molds made good castings and that's really all I care about. But then I switched back to the art resin, the epoxy, and I poured this set. And as you can see, I mean, it is shot through with bubbles. I mean, it was crazy. But what I learned, this epoxy resin doesn't particularly like to be vacked. It doesn't work. But what it loves is to be heated with, an, with a heat gun. So I spread the resin out into a pan and hit it with a heat gun. When it went into the molds, there was not a single bubble in sight. It was absolutely clear, and I knew that it was going to cast perfectly. Came in the next morning and found that it was just shot through with bubbles. And what I believe that is, is that's a reaction to the fact that I was casting the molds in urethane. When you cast resin into a silicone mold, molecules of the resin migrate into the mold, into the silicone. They, they mix, they just do. That's why molds wear out. It's because with each successive casting, more and more of the resin kind of eats the silicone. It migrates into the silicone. I think that we're looking at a reaction between the epoxy resin and the whatever molecules were still inside the mold. That's the only explanation for where all those bubbles came from because when I poured these dice, they were absolutely bubble free. So the last set of dice I made was this, same thing. I heat gunned and debubbleized this resin 100%. There were no bubbles in it. And in fact, I poured it, you can see, into an old mold that had never been cast in urethane. The only thing I'd ever cast in this mold was wax, and it just cast beautifully. This same resin poured this little face and this, these dyes, and there's no bubbles in here, and these are shot through with bubbles. And again, the only difference I can think of is that this mold had been cast with urethane, and this one never was. So materials are really sensitive. They're really... <laughs> this is what, you know, casting is just 
filling up containers, just pouring, it's like pouring water into a glass. There's really not much to it. Where the complexities and the difficulties and the problems come in is all the different materials all have to interact. They all have to work together. And if they don't, they cause all kinds of problems. So the verdict on this was the mold method that I used seemed to work pretty well and give us pretty clean castings. Mastering the clear resin, you know my history with clear resins. Every, in this channel, every time I use clear resins, it's a disaster. And that's because I've been pouring urethane for 30 years and I'm not as familiar with clear resin. And that's a take home lesson. You've got to learn your materials. The best way to do that is to use the same materials get them working, figure them out, really get to know them, and then you can have successful castings reliably and most of the time. Hey, if you like this video, hit that like button because it really does help the channel. And I hope you learned something. I hope you got something out of all this. Thanks for watching. I will see you next week.